gut instinct only really gets you so far. At some point, you need a better framework through which to make better decisions. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through how we're currently selecting feature films to lead produce. So it's taken us a minute to really um, get this framework in place and get this assessment tool in place that we're now using. Um, and when I say it's taken a while, I mean, it's taken years, you know, so I've up to this point produced eight feature films. I've EP'd about another four. I've helped another eight go into production. So I've been involved in a bunch of films, but partway through last year, I realized that there wasn't really a solid framework around making decisions about which films to get involved in. I'm going to tell you the very basic framework that I was using, but as a result of chats with my team, um, we decided that we needed something a bit more robust, something that we could really run a project through and examine whether it was the right project to get involved in on a number of criteria. So financial, creative, um, and any other outcomes that you know we're trying to achieve as a business. So we have just finished shooting a feature film and so we're now taking a minute before we jump on board any other films to really you know hone in and um, finalize this assessment tool and that's what i'm going to take you through in this video and by the end of this video hopefully you'll have a much larger selection criteria and you can go away and actually start incorporating some of these selection criteria um, into your decision making um, because it does seem to be one area that um, as filmmakers we struggle with um, or as producers myself we struggle with early on um, it's very easy to just jump into projects um, that you like and you know we've all had projects that end up really going nowhere or we just don't get as much out of them as we hoped so that's what this video is all about so First, I'm gonna take you through how I've done it up to this point, and then I'm gonna run you through the criterion tool that we're using now so that you can go away and come up with your own. So up until this point in time, there's really been three criteria that I've used, um, and I haven't even used them in a formal way, right? It's, it's, I think for the first films, I kind of just decided, and then I kind of worked out, oh, okay, I'm using these three kind of criteria and then that became my criteria going forward. And those three were essentially um, the creative, you know, was I excited about um, the actual creative? So the screenplay, um, was it something that turned me on? Um, or was there some reason that I felt like this story needed to be told? So that was it with the creative. It was just assessing that and deciding like, yeah, can I get excited about this? Is this something that I really wanna, you know, get my hands dirty with? Second one was, the director. So the way that I've structured all of my relationships up to this point is to very much be equal partners with the director in the film. And so making sure that the director was someone that I wanted to work with, someone that I believed had you know immense potential um, and someone that I was hoping to form a long-term relationship with, those were the sorts of things that I was thinking about when getting involved in projects. And then the third one was do I think this film can get financed? Um, and how quickly can it get financed? Or how easy is that gonna be? Or how difficult? Because I didn't wanna get involved in projects that will go nowhere. I felt that early on the most important thing was really to get runs on the board. And runs on the board didn't mean having a large development slate, it meant having films in production. And so I felt that if I was able to consistently get films into production, then I would be able to accelerate my career you know, over a long enough time horizon. So those were the three key criteria and they essentially informed every single one of my decisions about whether to get involved in a project as a producer, co-producer or EP. And so up until, yeah, it was around last year, um, I had three films that we finished in one year. Um, we just shot a film um, a few months ago and so I really wanted to just take a breath, you know, take a second and come up with something that would be a bit of a more robust criteria. And also looking back at the projects and thinking, okay, like where did they go right? Where did they go wrong? Where could have they have gone better? Or where do I feel like either 
myself as a producer or the company, like where could we have got more out of it? Either like intangible benefits, maybe from relationships that would have been formed um, or tangible benefits like, you know, just the fees that we we're getting out of it um, or overheads or, you know, so really just looking at all those projects and thinking, okay, like how could we have done them better? And how can I, when a project now comes to my desk, really assess that in a more clear way? And so what we've done now is actually created two tools. So one for our, the films that we will produce and one for the films that we will executive produce. And there's a bit of crossover, but they are different because you know they're both trying to achieve different outcomes. With the EP work, our main focus is to get the outcome and the result for the filmmaker, which is to get the film financed. You know, that's why they're coming to us and that's why they're trying to work with us. And so that's a very specific outcome. And so the criteria are really geared towards that. With the producing, we're also thinking about, yeah, those intangible benefits. We're thinking about, you know, the international appeal of a project because we as a company want to be making films that do have international appeal. Um, we're thinking about, you know, a little bit more about the creative or the authenticity behind a project. So there's just different things that we're thinking about now when assessing it, both of these types, um, types of, of projects that we do. So, in this video, what I'm going to do now is take you through the criteria that we've decided for our producing slate, because I think that one is going to be more relevant if you're watching this as a filmmaker, um, and hopefully you can start applying that to your project. So I'm just going to bring up some notes here on my screen. So this is an assessment tool that um, Tessa, who works with me, has um, was basically introduced to through a master's program that she did. Um, and so we're now using that, incorporating that into the company. And so the bait, just like to explain how it works, is you essentially choose 10 to 12 criteria and you weight each of those criteria so they're not equally weighted. You weight them all. And then when a project comes to you, you assess the project through each of those criteria. So I'm gonna give you some examples of what they could be. And worth noting actually before I dive in is that it's also different for TV than it is for film. You know, TV you might be looking at like, you know, is this something that can have um, multiple seasons? Um, you know, is it something that can be sold as a format or overseas? So you're thinking about different things. So here I'm gonna just concentrate on feature films. So to give you an example of like what some of those criteria could be, it could be financial return, it could be ownership of IP, you know, who's actually owning the IP, it could be collaborations. So like, you know, are you collaborating with someone that's gonna help, um, you know, generate reputation and experience um, are there intangible ben benefits that I spoke about? So it could be like a contact or maybe exposure, exposure to some way of making, like a, metho a methodology. So maybe you're getting insight into how someone else does things. Um, uh, it could be like First Nations. So like, you know, is there an authentic team behind the project? Like if that's something that's important to you as a company, then that would be a criteria. Um, you know, quality of creative, just like quality of the screenplay. Um, market appetite, is there a genuine appetite for this type of project in the marketplace? Um, new talent development, that could be another one. So, you know, are you doing this more as an, a, a talent escalator? You're like, you're trying to escalate an emerging filmmaker's career and you're trying to build like a long-term relationship with them. Um, so those are just some of the examples I've thrown at you. And um, what you can do now is hopefully just start thinking about these criteria. And a good way to do this is just like throw them all up on a whiteboard or, or just open a Google Doc and just start thinking about like what are all these different things um, and list as many as you can and then refine to about 10 to 12. So the ones that we ended up landing on um, are as follows. So positive impact. So does the film have a positive impact on society or is there something about the process of making the film that has a positive impact so for example 
you know, if the film, if we can see that it's gonna be a fun film to make and we're gonna enjoy that process, that's gonna have a positive impact on us. And so that, that is a criteria that we would look at. Um, at the same time, if it's, a, if, it's a, it's a, if it's a project that might have a positive impact on society because it addresses a social issue um, or something like that, then that might be a reason for us to, to, get, him, to get on board. And looking back at our slate, there have been a lot of films like that. And so that's something that we really wanted to kind of solidify as part of the decision making process. The next one was characters. So we want to make sure that we have, you know, that, we, that we're working with um, a creative that has strong characters, that have clear character arcs and that are compelling. Right? So we really we want to be working with character driven stories and that's something that we've decided you know is is they're the types of films that we like and so they're the types of films that we want to gravitate towards next one is ease of financing so this is a really important one because you know even though we've progressed i would say we're still very much in an emerging period you know we're kind of out of that starting stage survival stage um, but i think that for us it's still really important that we don't spend too long we don't spend too much of our time which is essentially the company's resources on projects that don't get financed you know we need to see a clear pathway to the film getting financed and we need to really be able to sit down as soon as we read the script and map out a finance plan and know how we're going to get it financed the next one is financial return so really looking at what are the producing fees that we can um, get out of the project you know, what are the overheads? Is there producer's margin? Basically, how much money can the company make from the fees that it's gonna generate from this film? So it's not talking so much about profit and royalty at that stage. It's really just making sure that we're getting involved in projects where we're not over committing or over extending to the point where it becomes, you know, it doesn't become financially rewarding or even financially sustainable. That's actually probably a better word to use, right? We want to make sure that the projects are sustainable and they're going to allow us to stay in the game and to keep making films and have enough time between each project to carry the, carry the company and get to the next one. Because I do think that one of the most important things that you can um, strive for in the film industry is just to stay in the game. You know, if you can stay in the game, if you can get not get taken out, if you can continue to make films, and if you can do that over a long enough time horizon consistently, then I do think you'll be successful. You know, so really for us, that is the, the aim of the game. So number five is investor friendly. So we want to make sure that A, we have a clear path for the investor to recoup. So that means really that there's distribution in place um, before we go into production. That means that we know those distributors, they have good relationships. Um, it means that our investors are always in an accelerated recoupment position, right? So they're always recouping in first position at a premium. Um, that way their chance of recouping is gonna be higher. It also means us assessing, you know, what is the right budget and amount of private equity that we're raising for a particular film and making sure that we have looked at projections, internal projections or projections from the sales agent or distributor that we're working in with and making sure that everything kind of lines up and then also making sure that the investors are really having a great experience from the process, right? So they're actually, you know, they're committing these financial resources and they're having a, I guess they're just enjoying the experience, right? We want to make sure that they're looked after so that we can develop long-term relationships with them, them as well because they're extremely important stakeholders. Next one is ownership of IP. So with the films that we're producing, you know, for us it is important that we own or control as much of that IP as possible so that we can maximize, you know, the potential of the project and our work from that ownership. So what that means in practice is really just that, you know, if we were gonna co-produce a film, for example, um, and we were minority co-producing partners, we might, like it would, that would just be a factor to look at, right? So it would be like, 
it would rank lower on this particular criteria and it would be something for us to look at. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that each of these criteria, they're not fixed setting stone things. So just because something is, let's say, you know, we don't have as much ownership of IP, then doesn't mean we have to say no to the project. In fact, it could be a reason for us to go back and say, well, actually owning IP is really important. So for us to get involved in the project, we would need to own 50% of it. So you can actually improve and increase these criteria um, as you work on the project or as you, you know, kind of before you commit to the project and as you're kind of deciding whether you're gonna get involved, you can look at ways for the criteria to actually improve before making that decision. So just wanted to note that um, because it took me a second to work that out. Uh, the next one is, so number seven is international buy-in. So for us, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna be really important for us to know that the film has an international audience. And so making sure that we have an international sales agent on board before the film gets financed or goes into production and they're putting up real money, they're skinning the game, that's something that's very important to us. Um, and so again, that's, that's one of the criteria that we've decided on. Number eight is story. So again, just making sure that, you know, the creative holds up, um, that we believe that, you know, the creative is of a certain level of quality, um, even just at that point, um, because that's, you know, you can't, like everyone knows this, but if you don't have a great screenplay, you can't make a great film. You know, it really all starts from that screenplay. Um, you can stuff it up, like you can have a great screenplay and still stuff up the film, but I think it's very hard to do it the other way around, to have an average screenplay and make a great film. So really, it all starts with the screenplay, so that's something that is, is you know, again, just a criteria that is gonna be more important as we go forward. Next one is collaborations. So this is really just about looking at who we're working with, do we see long-term potential in those relationships? You know, are there heads of department that are involved in the project that we wanna work with? Um, so it's really just examining, you know, yeah, what are those, what are the partnerships that we're gonna actually get out of this project? Um, and are those partnerships or collaborations ones that we feel are important to invest in? Next one, number 10, is the development timeframe. So again, this is very much, I think, due to the um, current stage of the business, right? We don't wanna be spending too long in development because we don't have the resources to be able to do that. So it's important to us that when, it's, when we're gonna be assessing projects that the film's pretty close to being ready to shoot. Like, it's fine if there needs to be some development, um, but for us to spend a year or two years developing a project, it's very hard for us to invest that time and those resources. We've done it in the past and we can see how it really hurt. Um, hurt the business um, because it took us away from other projects that could have gone into production, could have generated revenue. Um, so that's one that's important as well. And so, yeah, also to keep in mind that these criteria, I'm sure will change and we'll adjust them as, you know, as we grow, as we keep hopefully getting better. And then the last one is authenticity. So just making sure that the team behind the project um, and the story that they're trying to tell um, is authentic and there's alignment between those two things, particularly if they're telling a story um, about a, a sensitive subject matter, you know, we just wanna make sure that, um, yeah, that the team behind it, you know, understands that world um, and those experiences. So those are the criteria. And so what we've done from there is basically, um, and I'll, I'll reel them off again in order and, and I'll number them, and then I'll let you know what we've actually weighted them out of 10. So, number one, positive impact, we've um, weighted that eight out of 10. Characters, six out of 10. E uh, ease of financing, 10 out of 10. Financial return, 10 out of 10. Um, investor friendly and recruitment, seven out of 10. Ownership of IP, seven out of 10. International buying, eight out of 10. Story, 10 out of 10. Collaborations, six out of 10. Development timeframe, seven out of 10. Authenticity, nine out of 10. So 
within that you can really understand like what are the key car um, what are the key priorities or key criteria and like what are we really focusing on and still um, you know what's really at the top of the list so I can tell you now you know is the financing financial return and story are the three top ones you know because again given the stage of the business um, those things are really important and we think that if we get the story right and if there's a way to get the film financed and it's a sustainable model for us then that's a really good way for us to kind of get to hopefully the next stage um, as a company and as as producers so that's it in terms of how you know the criteria the weighting so like i mentioned what you can do is basically hopefully this is like giving you ideas of some of the criteria there's no exhaustive list like you can come up with this yourself um, but i encourage you to number one do a big brain dump of all those criteria and then come up with a 10 to 12 um, that are relevant or sorry that you want to focus on and then within those 10 to 12 weight them all in order of priority um, and then from there basically any time a project comes to you and you know there, there might still be and and for us for example there's still going to be an assessment that kind of takes place before we even run it through this you know like tessa and i will basically sit down and have a chat about the project and just you know make sure it's doing certain things and we're excited about it and you know have a chat about the team behind it and those sorts of things so we'll have like an initial assessment but as long as it gets through that stage and we're excited about the project then we would run it through this tool and really look at okay like is it actually achieving everything that we want to want it to achieve as a company um, and if it's not can we improve those things you know so if it's ranking low on ease of financing but that's a high priority for us is there a way that we could do this film or finance this film in another way that would actually make it easier so we would then examine those things and then you know take those to the discussions that we're having with the filmmaker or the team um, or maybe internally if we've like optioned a book or something like that and so then we would have those discussions and then see if we can get it ranking higher and then we would make a decision about whether we move ahead so that's how we do it there's a, quite a bit in that video i think if you're just starting out though you know you don't need to overdo it either really your focus should be um, the script the people that you're working with and can you get it financed i think you know those are really the three most important um, especially if you're just working on your first feature film i would say like really hone in on those three get those right and then once you get through that process um, then you can start thinking about you know some of these other criteria and how you can build out a bit of a robust um, robust tool so that's it for the video i hope you liked it and i'll see you on the next one